lovely to see you, Anne, and we love it when you come on, Lucy, because you're allowed to smile. You don't have to look stern. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. have to look too stern when no, you No, exactly. Down. And we always love to see you. And one of the things you wanted to talk about while you were here is um, autism. And mm -hmm. you have talked about the fact you have asthma. Burgers. Yes. Well, firstly, am I pronouncing that correctly? Well, I think so. Uh, it's named after a guy called Hans Asperger, who was um, Austrian or possibly German, I can't remember. But the Germans would pronounce it Asperger. Asperger. An awful lot of people say Asperger. Asperger. Mm. I, I, I'm not bothered. People say to me, what don't you like people to say? I, I, what offends mm. you? Like, honestly, it's really hard to offend me. I mean, sometimes people get stuff wrong. OK, so they get stuff wrong. And how old were you when you got an official Diagnosis. Uh, it was in 2005, so I was um, near. I was 46. And did it? Yeah. Did it? Was it a relief to get that um, diagnosis or not? Yeah, it was. It kind of it made sense of a lot of things. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I started suspecting it in about 2003. It took me about two years to get the diagnosis. And why did you? Ex did you? Did you start to? Suspect it. Um, I, I, I think that I saw a documentary on TV and there was mm. just something about it that, that rung bells in my brain. I remember in my diary writing, I'm beginning to suspect, to suspect again that I have Asperger's syndrome. And I have looked back through my diaries and I cannot find any place oh, where God. I started suspecting it earlier. I do uh, say there's a lot of undiagnosed adults, actually. There yeah, was a, a documentary recently, I think yeah, it was just called Are You Autistic? Mm -hmm. And there were two out of the group who were officially diagnosed at and the end. And do you yeah. say, I'm autistic or I have Asperger's? Um, Is there a difference? Uh, well, OK, it always used to be the case that um, there was high-functioning autism, which is when, you know, you can function. Uh, you're not actually just sitting in the corner rocking and being non-verbal, but you have all sorts of... There's things you struggle with. Uh, and the difference between high-functioning autism and Asperger's traditionally was always that you were diagnosed with Asperger's if you didn't have any speech delay as a child. If you talked at the normal right. age, okay. then that was Asperger's, and if you didn't, it was oh. high-functioning autism. And it's... And it's important. And it's, it's right, isn't it, that it's much harder to, that a lot more girls go undiagnosed than boys because yes. of this learning to mask and... Yes. And, and to... I mean, there probably is more... Um, autism among boys than among girls, but it is extremely underdiagnosed. It used to be, I, I seem to remember uh, years ago, uh, there was a statistic that uh, there are four times as many autistic boys as there are girls, but there are ten times as many undiagnosed girls no. as there are boys. Yeah. So when you were watching Something that like, documentary, like that. what were the traits that kind of leapt out at you that you just, thought, that's uh, me? There was just a little boy uh, arguing with his mother and just the tone of his voice rang bells of me. I thought that sort of absolutely despairing squeal that she just does not understand mm. what it is that's bothering you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, I haven't had a sort of proper screaming meltdown since I was about 13, not a proper toddler tantrum since then, but I can get very stroppy if I'm tired and overworked. And, and, and what about in your holding down a job? You have obviously a you know, very high-profile yeah. job, high-pressure mm. job. Yeah, I mean, the difficult bit, really, is just simply keeping myself organised enough to actually get myself to Elstree and, you know, with the suitcases and checked into the hotel. It'd be a lot easier if I lived down here, <laughs> which is, you know, something I might be considering. So do you have to... Con is it that you, you can do that as long as you focus just on I, that I and can, everything else yes. kind of goes out? A lot of, of other stuff doesn't get dealt with or gets dealt with very slowly or very late. So that would be a hell of a moving day, cos you say that you've got... Quite a it lot of clutter. Really would. <laughs> yeah, people sometimes say, you know, you don't seem autistic. Where do you keep your autism? And I'm like, it's behind my front door. And I'm not <laughs> coming in. Do you, not, and, do you seriously not let people into your house? Uh, not at the moment. I'm just, no, guys, you know, when I've got it sorted, but not right now. And you don't, you don't believe in holidays, right? Well, it's more that I just don't really... My idea of time off, my idea of downtime, is just simply to stay home and relax and just sort of surf around on the internet, basically. And do you need that, Anne, do you think, because you have Asperger's? Do you yeah, need I mean, I guess quiet, everybody needs downtime. Do you need quiet time? But that's time. the kind of downtime I need. I yeah. just need everything to go quiet, people to stop bothering me, um, and I need to not have to be thinking about, you know, when I'm going to get packed... Um, you know, I like to have my own kitchen so I can mm. cook and I like to have a washing machine so I can do my washing. Mm. Uh, so you know, do you things feel, you don't get do you, in the hotel. 
Do you ever feel lonely or just being on your own is, is the best thing I've because it's less stress? I've never in my life, as far as I know, felt lonely. I'm never lonely and rarely bored. Cool. Um, the most boring <laughs> thing would be to be with people who just, you know, wouldn't shut up. That's being really straight talking, and there's a lot of women on this show that are very straight talking as well. Does that sometimes, do you find that gets lumped into, oh, you've got Asperger's, therefore that's why you're, you're you know, you've just said that very. Matter of fact. Matter yeah, of fact I mean, thing. I think I sort of tend to be quite matter of fact. Uh, I mean, there are times when I might sort of occasionally lash out at someone and people will make excuses, oh, she's naive and autistic. And actually, no, it was probably because I was overworked and stressed and hadn't slept and they properly. Were and they were annoying and, you. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, somebody may just have happened to say the wrong thing at one moment and any time now I was going to bite someone's head off and that person was in the way and they got <laughs> it. And it probably doesn't say anything about that particular person. No. no. She said not mentioning any names. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley Walsh. That's, no, no, that's actually not who I was thinking of. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I, I just have to say... Who thinking of. I'm not telling you. Come on, come on. Perfectly nice girl who happened to say the wrong thing and I just bit her head off on live TV. Ooh. Would we know who she is? Uh, very possibly. But I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anne is actually um, supporting the Autism Hour, which is a very interesting... This is where they're going to get businesses, supermarkets and things to have an hour where they turn the music off, they turn the lighting down, yeah. so that people with autism and Asperger's who find those things difficult can shop. Yeah, right. it does sound like a nice idea. I have to say, quite a lot of them, I think, are having this Autism Hour quite early in the morning. Mm. Uh, I'm not good at getting up early. <laughs>